Narrative and storytelling is one of the main topics here at Game Lab 2015 and one of the developers who's talking about this is David Gaither. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, uh, of course, you're responsible for Bioware's uh, storytelling mainly and in Dragon Age Inquisition, of course. Uh, this game was Game of the Year in some of our countries, for example, Game Ratter UK. So, first, congratulations about the game. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, it was uh, it was long haul. It was nice uh, to have it released and have have received so much acclaim from so many different sites. It was very gratifying. Uh, now that the success, I mean, there's some months after the the launch, and what is the main feedback you took from players uh, on Dragon Age Inquisition? Uh, the main feedback. Well, there's there's been a lot. I mean, uh, for us, it was the first time that we'd done a game that incorporated so much uh, exploration. Uh, uh, Inquisition was a very long game, a uh, lot, lot of uh, large areas. And I think um, the feedback, I think the, the largest bit, bit of feedback would be just uh, that players wanted to see the, the exploration areas sort of incorporated a little more tightly into the story, have a, have a bit more uh, fleshed out uh, uh, writing in it. I think, uh, I, think uh, I was playing The Witcher 3 recently, and they did actually a really good job in uh, with their side quests and sort of making them feel alive, have interesting characters, things like that. I think just having people are accustomed to uh, uh, Bioware games just being sort of chock full of story, and I think I think that's going to be the team's main goal. I, I I'm not on Dragon Age anymore myself. Uh, I passed it off to Patrick Weeks. He's he's uh, he's another senior writer who works with the company, and uh, I think uh, they're very excited about the direction they're going to go in next. I think they, that, that we all learned a lot from Inquisition. Well, what could you say on uh, what goes into character-specific writing and the dialogue between characters and NPCs, etc.? What goes into it? Uh, a lot of writing. I mean, uh, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition had about, mm, let's say, about 60,000 lines of recorded dialogue. I think in that range, and about a third of it uh, went into our major characters, uh, the followers who, who travel with you, the advisors back at the base. That was about um, 11 or 12 characters all told. And each of them had a long arc, uh, personal character arc. Some of them had romances. So each one of those, uh, I have a team of up to uh, seven other writers. We sit down and we just uh, we work through exactly what those arcs are going to be. It, it's a process where you 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 start off with a with a sort of a pitch, a, a small idea, like a paragraph or so, and we we pitch it to the rest of the team because it's not just the writers. It's not the with the writers. It's not as if we we come up with this story and we hand it off to the rest of the team and they make it. Uh, we're working in conjunction with uh, technical designers, with artists, uh, with the programmers. There's an entire team of people, and and I think everybody who came to Bioware did did that because they wanted to be storytellers. It's, it, the writing isn't the only story part of the story. We have a bunch of brilliant people who are very passionate about what story in games. So as a team, uh, there is, it starts with the writers, and then we're, we're proposing the ideas, and if it catches on with the rest of the, the team, then we start breaking it out further, because these, these quests all have, you know, uh, uh, these, these characters all have quest arcs, and, and uh, uh, there, there's cutscenes that are involved, so we have cinematic designers who sort of immediately start trying to think about, okay, how do we translate this into a, a compelling uh, visual story as well as, as, well as uh, all the dialogue involved. It's, it's, a, it's a lengthy process. Uh, Inquisition took us three years. How do you specifically write the main characters who are returning as NPCs now? The main characters? You mean uh, from, like, from previous games, like Leliana and so? Ah, well, we, we still have the same writers who worked on them originally. Leliana was written by one of our writers, uh, Cheryl Chi. And uh, so basically, if, when we got to the point where we knew these characters would return, uh, Varric was written by Mary Kirby, and another one of our writers. Uh, when there's a character who's returning, we sit down and we talk about what are we doing with them next. Because we, we want to make sure that we're going somewhere with the character. We don't just want to bring a character back just to, just to have them there, right? So it's like, I, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we have cameos, but if it's a cameo, it's like they show up, they're, they're part of a quest, and, and, and it's, a, it's a nod to the players who, who, who played the previous games and like those characters, and that's great. And we can only do so much of that. But if it's like a major character, like Varric is returning. A lot of people loved Varric, but it's, I sit down with Mary and, and we talk about, okay, what's going to happen with Varric? Where is he going to go? And if, if, she, if she was to reply to me and say, I don't really have anywhere for him to go, I think he's done. 
then we, would, then we wouldn't have brought them back, right? So it's really a question of what can we do now? Is there an interesting place to, to develop their stories? And we want, we want those touchstone characters to come back because it sort of gives a player, because we don't have the same main character. The Inquisitor was new, but we want sort of those touchstone characters to sort of connect the players who have been playing the games for a while to those, to those earlier games. Of course, the inclusive approach about gay characters uh, um, implemented by Bioware was a new step uh, in, this, in this topic. What do you think is the next step uh, for being more inclusive in games? For being more inclusive in games? I mean, uh, we, we do have gay characters. Uh, we had one transgender character uh, in, uh, in Dragon Age Inquisition. I think we can do better than that. I mean, uh, what about a, a major character? Because the, the one we had was an interesting character, but it was a... Uh, no, but that was... Um, uh, oh, what was his name? I suddenly can't think of it. He was one of uh, one of uh, Iron Bull's lieutenants. Was transgender. Dorian Dorian was was uh, definitely gay. Uh, so we've had we've had major characters that are gay. But you know, what about a major character that's that's transgender? Or I think uh, just as much I'd like to see us having more characters around in the world, so that you 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 encounter them just as part of the story. And I mean, uh, or, or in a, there's also allowing the player to sort of. Uh, embody that if they want to, if, if they are, you know, I don't know, I don't know, asexual or, or just allowing them the, that, that, that to, if they identify in a particular way that they are able to put themselves in their character and not have it be contradicted. I mean, it, I don't think there's a, there's a lot, a lot, to, like, you're never going to make a game that's going to, going to encompass the breadth of humanity, right? I mean, uh, one game is never going to solve everything, but I think it's just a matter of getting everybody on board and thinking about it a little bit more, uh, thinking about uh, other sorts of players and, 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 letting, and inviting them actively to play your game. I think, uh, I think that's, just, that's just something that... Uh, I mean, uh, the, the team does consider that. I, I, I really enjoy the fact that... Uh, there, were, there was, uh, you know, our, our, right from our concept artists to parts of the team that I weren't even aware of, uh, were thinking about that, that, that during the process with Inquisition, uh, it, it wasn't like there's, there's just a couple people that are proposing this, the, that it, it's a team-wide thing, and we, we, would get, we would get art concepts, you know, being suggested as like, well, maybe this character could be a minority. Wouldn't that be interesting? And that's, that's the point. I think a lot of people, when this conversation is had, uh, a lot of people just sort of assume that it's a con it's con it's a confinement, yeah. that it's a restriction. Oh, the developers should be free to do what they want to do. Like like if they if it, somebody wasn't forcing us to, we wouldn't do it. But the thing is, is that when it comes up, oftentimes it, it actually sparks the imagination. Like there's more possibilities to these characters than than this 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 one box of things that they can be. That they're that sometimes when it comes up. Like Krem, that was that was the character, the transgender character. Originally, the, the character was just was just sort of a, a a warrior character, and there wasn't much that was interesting about him. And then uh, uh, Patrick Weeks, who who wrote Iron Bull, who uh, Krem was the lieutenant for, uh, suggested said, "Well, what if Krem's transgender?" And everybody was like, "Hey, that that is really interesting." So it actually it, it expands the possibilities of things you can do with characters. I think it adds adds to it. I mean. As, as long as you're doing it in a respectful manner and, and it, it is something, and you, you're not just making them something for the sake of it, but at the same time, I don't think you need to justify it either. It's like, Krem is transgender. You don't need to then turn around and say, well, why is he transgender? Because you, you wouldn't do that ordinarily. You make a character white and straight, you never have to say, well, why is he white? He has to, he has to justify being white. It's like, no, so. I think once, as soon as, as once we, if the industry as a whole has more characters like that, then I think we just, then we can just stop trying to explain it. It will just be. Okay. Um, you mentioned uh, Witcher storytelling already, and of course, uh, there's people from the Witcher here. Yes. There's Chris Crawford with his whole uh, uh, narrative, uh, interacting narrative project for his whole life, and of course you from Bioware. Uh, so you are all talking about storytelling and how would you compare your methods to them, theirs, and uh, what would you take uh, uh, from them as inspiration, for example? I mean, uh, when you play other games, you're always taking something from it. I think it, it actually, in some ways, it's, it's kind of hard 
because if I play an, an RPG, it's hard for me to enjoy it like a player because I'm constantly analyzing it. And, and, and you know, you see things that they do, and you're like, oh, that was so great. The the CD project did some really great things with The Witcher Three, and you get a little jealous. It's like, uh, why didn't we think of that? Or, or you know, there's lots of reasons. Uh, the, the, making a game is a series of compromises. I'm sure they had their challenges just the same that we did. And but when you, when you see that they've done done something really well, it's like you know, okay, you don't want to you don't want to copy it, but you want to look at it and, and say and try to think of like, well, it's interesting that they did that. I wonder what they had to give up to get that, or yeah. what was the thought process behind that. You'd like, you'd like to just grab one of the developers and just kind of pick their brains and say, hey, because I bet you uh, their opinion of that is going to be much different than, than your, your fan who plays it. Because uh, they, they probably, would, they, they might turn around and say, oh no, we had real problems doing that, or yeah, we, we did that, but we, we really wanted to do this other thing that uh, maybe didn't work so well. So it's, it's, a, it's nice to sort of um, uh, look at the, the, the mindset that behind some of those things. Uh, the Chris Crawford, uh, uh, um, the, the, his plan with sort of the, the emergent narrative is interesting. I, I really would like to see where he goes with that because he's, he's trying to get away from the, the, the limitations of branching narrative, right? Uh, um, uh, which is which is a it is a limitation because it, it's very prescriptive and that and it, branching narrative is great it, it uh, provides agenda uh, uh, sorry agenda agency to okay. the player but it comes at a really hefty cost and one that's prohibitive to a lot of companies I mean uh, if you have to you can make a I mean Bioware makes big games but they require a lot of uh, dialogue to be written that all has to be recorded cinematics have to be created for all those scenes it is incredibly expensive and it's it's, it's a big investment and what if it what if a game like that doesn't sell that well then you're you're losing money and, and games are struggling as it is yeah, we'll see when when the game launches and um yeah. this year is of course the star wars year uh, you can feel the force around <laughs> i mean there's the, the movie uh, uh, the Force Awakens at the end of the year, no, and of course the EA game, uh, Battle from the new game. Um, one game I personally love from Bioware is the first nine Knights of the Old Republic game. I mean, uh, these stories were incredible. How would you imagine a modern take, take on it? And what would you try uh, story-wise with a modern Star Wars, you know, like an RPG, but not the online version, but something like that? You know what, it, 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 if I got put onto such a project, it probably wouldn't be up to me. I mean, uh, it's not like they, they turn to me and say, Dave, here's a, do any Star Wars story, what would, you, what would you like to do? And I'd be like, well, no, I, they, it would be a negotiation, right, of, of what exactly the story would be. But if I had my druthers, um, I think a lot depends on where they're, where they're going with the movies. Because I mean, the question: if there was going to be a new new Star Wars RPG, the question is, uh, it, would it be based in whatever the new timeline is? Because it's following the original trilogy, right? So we're going ahead into unknown waters. So would the story take place then? Are we talking about the Old Republic, which is you know thousands of years prior to the movie timeline? It would also be interesting to see what happened there, because there's this whole mis whole period that go that is between the Old Republic when there was lots of Sith. And lots of lots of Jedi to to where the, the the a new hope begins, right? And you have you know two Sith and no Jedi. So I mean, uh, there there's room to look at the the narrative. I, I think there's uh, Star Wars is a wonderful universe. And just just thinking about that kind of makes me salivate a bit to just to be able to <laughs> jump back into that. If that, if that would happen, that that would be that would be pretty awesome. I, th I think there's uh, there's so many stories you could tell in the Star Wars universe. Yes, definitely. Uh, you're working on a secret game. I don't know if that game is Mass Effect Andromeda or if you can tell us anything about that secret game you're working on. It's not Mass Effect Andromeda. Uh, Mass Effect Andromeda has been worked on in, in Montreal. Uh, the, we, I work in uh, Ed, our Edmonton office in Western Canada. Um, so it's, an, it's another team. We have, we have some people in Edmonton who are working on Mass Effect as well, but it is, it is a, a separate thing. I'm working on a, a brand new world and, and game, and, and we haven't announced it yet, so there's literally nothing I can say. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Closing one, uh, storytelling challenge versus expectation. Uh, that's what you're talking about here at Game Lab 2015. What can you share about this uh, speech? Uh, well, the, 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 the premise is that uh, um, when we're making narrative for, for video games, uh, there, there is an expectation for players when they, when they come into it in that they have been trained 
to look on narrative as one type of thing. If you look at narrative in a, in a movie or a book, it's a, it's a very linear narrative and it requires no interaction. But that is what most people think of as a narrative. So when they think of narrative in a video game, they think it's like a movie or a book, but better. And the better, I guess, is supposed to come when you have uh, agency. There's interaction, so there's agency, and that's the better. But it, it, having that agency, the requirement for agency, puts limitations on a narrative designer that most people don't understand. So it's like the, the, they, they want it to be like a book or a movie, but better, yet we are actually restricted in many ways. So we're constantly doing a, a, an, an illusion. We're, we're, we're adding an illusion of agency and not real agency, um, but we were trying to convince the player, like, here's, here's the paths you have. And then we spend all our time trying to convince the player that those are the paths they want, and not these other things that they aren't actually able to do. If you do that well, they think it's awesome. Well, they had all these choices. If you do it poorly, then they feel very restricted. Yeah. Yes. yes. Thank you very much for your time, David. Thank you. Enjoy your time in Spain. Oh, thanks. <laughs>